Let me continue now illustrating some elementary functions. The most elementary is a function that is equal to a known number. Here I indicate it with a parameter a. Like in algebra, a has a given number. In this case, say a equals to 1. On the bottom right of the slide, you, actually, you see the graph of this function. You change the value of a, say from 1 to 3, and you imagine by the concept that I illustrated to you intuitively a moment ago, that this function is going to move upwards. And it's still going to be horizontal. If the factor is, if, if this a parameter is going to be negative, well, this function, this straight line, horizontal straight line, will be uh, going down and will be located in the negative quadrants of this Cartesian plane. In the case of a straight line, things are slightly more complicated. You have two parameters. One is the constant factor, and the other one determines the slope. I call them m and a completely arbitrarily. You're free to call them whatever you want. And the way that I use, the trick I use to plot a straight line is to remember to place x to equal to 0 or f of x equal to 0 and look the corresponding intersection. If x equal to 0, then I'm looking for intersection with this axis that is characterized by having the horizontal coordinate equal to 0 and I will find the point which is going to be the value of a. I will demonstrate it in a moment. Vice versa, when this value is going to be 0, by making x explicit, bringing a on the first hand side, left hand side, and dividing by m, I will discover the um, other intersection. This is a stupid trick to plot a straight line in the Cartesian plane. Let me demonstrate how these functions are changing by changing interactively m and a. This time you see two sliders. One is controlling the constant a, and the other is controlling the factor m. Let me move the constant a once more, showing the obvious. If I move it up, if I change the values, I see an horizontal function that moves up. If I put negative values, I see that it, go that it goes down in the negative quadrants, for instance. Let me now keep this parameter fixed to minus 0.4 and let me change the value of the factor m. It's relevant that m is also called slope of the line. Maybe you will have some reminiscence from the time of the high school. If the slope is 0, like in this case m equals to 0, the straight line is going to be horizontal. If it's positive, the line will be tilted towards the right, increasing towards for increasing values of the independent variable x. And the larger is this value, the steeper will be uh, the, the, the straight line, the slope. You actually see I'm increasing m, and the steepness of this line is increasing. The line is getting steeper and steeper. If I use a negative value for m, like minus 35, you will actually see that the slope is going to change. It's going to be tilted in the other direction, like in this case. So it's a decreasing straight line if m is negative. Let me put it in absolute terms smaller, like minus 18.18. You will see that in absolute terms the slope is decreasing, but the sign of the slope is remaining. Is remaining. Another function that is extremely important for our course is the exponential function. The graph is indicated in the right bottom part of the slide, and the expression, the mathematical expression of the exponential function is given here. In this particular case, I use as the so-called base of the function the Euler number, 2.71, etc. It doesn't really matter. You probably remember intuitively the concept of exponential growth. So as x is increasing, e to the power x, regardless of this uh, scaling factor c, and the rigid offset, positive or negative, like I demonstrated before, you actually have, from for increasing values of the independent variable, you have an exponential and explosive growth, an explosive 
increase in the values of the, exp of the exponential of this function. In this case, it's plotted with a positive c, whereas on the left is plotted with a negative c, so it's minus 1. And you see that in this case, the exponential is decaying, and it takes an infinite amount of coordinates x to reach 0, whereas in this case, is uh, came from 0 and cross this axis in the point 1 and kept increasing exponentially. You can understand this by remembering that by multiplying inside the argument of a function by a negative number, you have a flip, a symmetrical flip, where the symmetry in this case is around the vertical axis. In this case, I have two sliders. One is controlling the constant factor inside c, which is here at the denominator, inside, and the other one is the constant factor. I demonstrated already that by adding a factor, adding a constant, which is positive, the graph of the function moves upwards, whereas if I add a negative value, the graph of the function moves downwards rigidly, like a rigid offset. Let me show you what happens when this denominator is still positive, but it becomes very large. Notice how the function is getting less steep. It takes longer and longer and longer to explode. But also on the left side of the plot, to reach an horizontal asymptotic level. Let me show you, however, now what happens if this number, if this factor, is lower than 1. Still positive, but lower than 1. You should see in a moment, after some delay, that the speed of convergence is extremely fast. It's faster and faster. It's steeper and steeper. In this case, for point 2, it almost instantaneously, say, it's almost immediately explodes, reaching uh, almost a vertical asymptote. And then on this part, is almost instantaneously reaching the horizontal asymptote, which is actually given by the value of a, minus 0.5. Let me conclude reminding you another familiar function which is intimately related to the exponential. It's called a logarithm, and I'm pretty sure that you heard and you used it many times in your life. It's the inverse operator of the exponentiation function. Log of base a of x means the exponent that you have to give to the base in order to have the argument x. I repeat it, log in base a of x is a specific exponent b that once you give it to the base a, you get the argument x. So it's the inverse operation than the exponentiation function. And here, the graph of the logarithm is indicated. One thing that, it, that you might want to notice is that for negative values of the argument, the logarithm is simply not defined. And then for the horizontal coordinates where the independent variable equals to 1, the logarithm is changing sign. Whatever is lower than 1 is negative, whatever is posit larger than 1 is positive. And it's worth at this time to remind you of very simple properties of the logarithm. Whenever you have a logarithm, here I'm using the symbol for the natural logarithm, the log, with the base chosen as the Euler number, e. If it's a log of a power, then the exponent here can be placed as a factor, as a multiplicative factor, so that this expression is equivalent. Another important property is the sum or subtraction of logarithms. In the case of the sum, the sum of logs is the log of a product. And in the case of the subtraction, the, di the difference of logs is the log of the ratio. These are very important, and they were particularly important decades ago, where 
uh, when calculators or smartphones were not available, people were using specific rulers to calculate geometrically, if you want, multiplication and uh, divisions. If you don't believe about this or about anything else that I introduced during these classes, you should challenge yourself by remembering the definition. The log is the inverse operation of the exponential. So if you combine the two of them, well, they should cancel, being one the inverse of the other, and to try to prove the relationship like the one that I indicated here. This is an equivalent, so if I apply the exponential to both sides, I get once more an equivalence. And if I remember that the, the power of a sum is the product of the powers, I can easily prove what I just uh, uh, offer. The exponential and the log are one the inverse operation of the other, so the exponential of the log of a is a, and I end up with, uh, with an equivalence which is always true. Now, because this is true, this is also truth. I invite you to challenge whatever I uh, introduce or say or the results or the equations or the simulation that I show you by using your own homework or your own hands-on experience. Let me sum up what we discussed. I gave you a brief refresher on the concept of a function of a single variable, and I pointed to potential hands-on tools, the website, as well as these interactive Jupyter notebooks, for you to get, to get a hands-on experience on the graph of a function. And I offer you an intuitive way on how adding or multiplying a constant changes the graph of a function, hopefully by remembering by heart just roughly the shape of the elementary function that we discussed, straight lines, exponential and logarithms, you should be able to guess the shape of the graph of composed functions. Now, if you feel that you want to revise these material or review algebra or calculus, I would like to point you to online resources that I found useful while preparing this module. Finally, if you have just a few couple of more minutes and you want to enjoy yourself, I would point you to this very interesting and entertaining brief TED talk about the linguistic reason of why X is often used as the unknown.